friends, it's Sam. So I feel like I'm generally pretty awkward in like all of the intros of every video I've ever posted on YouTube, but today feels like the most awkward because right now in this current moment, I am adding all of the fine details and finishing touches to this kitchen renovation, which has been a year plus long project. At the time that this video is gonna go live, this entire project is going to be done. It's gonna be on my channel. We're gonna be celebrating. We're gonna be happy dancing. It's gonna feel amazing. But right now in this moment, we are focusing on one particular project that you have already seen in the full kitchen makeover video. And that is a custom shelf for the side of my fridge. So when you walk into my house, the first thing you see is the side of my refrigerator. And like, that's fine, but I feel like this could be usable space for things like, I don't know, cutting boards or coffee or like more cutting boards. Cause like you can't have enough cutting boards, am I right? So in today's video, we are going to be focusing on creating a custom shelving system for the side of my refrigerator. I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to see what this looks like when you walk through the front door in my brain it's gonna look pretty cool but we're not gonna know until it's up because sometimes like the, the brain to real life doesn't always translate but I think I think we're gonna be okay on this one that being said I am so stoked about this project because it is the final project that needs to get done in my kitchen so let's get started Friends, I do want to jump straight into this build, but before I do, I also want to just say thank you and I love you all for being so cool about the kitchen renovation series. It felt like a huge success and I'm so excited that I got to bring you all along on that journey with me. I could not be happier with this space, but now that that's over, let's focus on some builds. I missed woodworking so much. Okay, so first up, what I did is I picked up some select pine from the home improvement store and I got to work by cutting out the pieces I needed to make basically just a box for the shelf. Now, since this is a custom built-in, what I needed to do was rip these boards down to the exact width that I needed to fit perfectly in that space. This will be different for everybody's project. For me, I had about four and a quarter inches to play with here. So that is what I cut my pieces down to. I then made some pocket holes in the top and the bottom of the shelf. This is where I'll be attaching that general frame together and you'll never see the pocket holes because they'll be hidden by the floor and the ceiling. If you're interested in the finer dimensions that I use for this project, I will post plans for this on my website and you can find those plans by clicking on the link below this video. In the meantime though, I will stop talking as you watch me assemble these pieces together using pocket hole screws and wood glue. Okay, cool. So I was just talking to a camera that I thought was recording for the past two minutes and it just like wasn't recording. It was so awesome. All right. Hey friends, the hair is wild, but like, you know, when it's been in a ponytail for too long, you just need to take it out of a ponytail. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So if you can't tell, I'm like spiraling right now. I'm kind of like spiraling to the point where I'm paralyzed on this project. And uh, I think what I'm going to end up doing is heading over to my Patreon discord and sharing some of my design ideas because we have like a little DIY community there and it's been super helpful to kind of throw some ideas back and forth on. So if you're not part of that community, come hang out. It's been really awesome. But anyway, here's where my brain is. I can't decide if I want to keep the back of this shelf open or if I I want to close it with a piece of plywood. If I choose to keep the melamine exposed, then I just cut these shelves to the same depth as the frame and like we're good to go. But if I decide that I want to add a quarter piece of plywood, then I have to cut all of these shelves a quarter inch thinner and not as deep as the frame. And then I have to also cut a quarter inch groove in the back of the frame to accommodate the piece of plywood. But then if I install it and I decide like I don't like the plywood and I want to take the plywood off and just see the melamine, 
Halloween, that's not gonna work because then all of these shelves are gonna be a quarter inch too thin and there's gonna be like a quarter inch gap in the back of them. Yeah, so my brain is kind of like all over the place. I almost feel like it's short circuiting right now, like that there are like smoke and barks coming out of my ears. Malfunction, the input. So I thought this was gonna be a one day project, but because I am in this like paralyzed mental creative headspace right now, I'm gonna walk away for the day and just like stare at the side of my fridge for a little longer. That being said, I'm gonna walk away from this. I'm gonna go, I'm probably gonna watch some Great British Bake Off. I'm probably gonna eat snacks and watch the baking show at the same time and just kind of take a few hours to rethink all of my life choices. All right, it is what it is. I'd rather take an extra day and make this something I'm proud of rather than rush it and then regret that decision for as long as I've just stared at it in this house, so. Everything hurts, including my brain, my body, and my soul. Ooh. See you tomorrow, friends. Okay, I figured it out. Hi, friends. New day, new me, new ideas. Well, kind of the same ideas as last time we talked, but new solutions. Sure. I've decided that I'm going to add a back to this shelf for a couple of reasons. One, I remeasured, I did run like a little dry fit off camera, and there is a little gap in the back of like one of the corners because that specific beam that I'm pushing this shelf up to just isn't perfectly straight. It's, the house was built in 1950, so like nothing straight. So in order to hide that gap and make it look neater, I'm going to add a back to the back of the shelf. Also, I was thinking like having a back to the shelf is gonna separate the living room space just a little bit more from that kitchen without adding an entire extra wall. And I kind of like the idea of doing that. I am going to rip all of these shelving pieces on the table saw so that they are a quarter inch shallower than the frame so that the backing of the shelf fits. I'm gonna install those, install the decorative pieces, flip this puppy over, route a channel in the back, sand and stain, and then eventually add the backing. It's a little late in the game today. It's already like three o'clock, which means I have like two more minutes till the sun goes down, but I'm gonna see what I can get done while the sun is still up. And then hopefully we can finish up this shelf tomorrow and install it. Cause that would be rad. So let's get started. Oh God, why does it hurt my back so much to stand up, just exist? Whew. So let's jump back into voiceover world for a second here. So as you see, I did flip my shelf over and on the back side, I routed a groove into the back. And this groove is what is going to hang on to that plywood that I'm gonna cut for the backing. I also used a chisel to square up all of the edges. This will make cutting and fitting that piece of plywood so much easier in the next couple of steps. And as this whole shelf thing was upside down, I also then decided to install the actual shelf pieces, which I screwed in from the non-visible side that will be against the wall. But for the visible side that will be seen from the kitchen, I did use pocket hole screws and I made sure to plug those pocket hole screws with matching wood covers. Okay, also quick little magic trick, not really a magic trick, it's more of just like a little woodworking trick. If you have a small gap, like the ones that are around these pocket hole plugs, if you fill them with some wood glue and then sand them while they're still wet, it'll fill those holes with some fine dust from the wood. And then when you go to stain, it'll match pretty perfectly. You actually cannot see these plugs when you look at the shelf. But yeah, after going full Houdini on those pocket hole plugs, it was time to then add those decorative pieces to the front of the shelf. Okay, friends. Ugh, microphone's gonna die, I gotta talk fast. Okay. It is pitch black outside, which means that the lighting in my shop really sucks. Am I on camera? I think I'm on camera now. So the lighting in here kind of sucks right now. It is what it is. But I really want to get this thing stained before I call it a night because I want it to dry overnight so I can apply finishing coats and install hopefully tomorrow. Yeah, so I already sanded this down to 220 grit off camera. I was trying to like do it quick and beat the sun. Clearly I didn't beat the sun. It's fine. Sand it down, wiped it down. I'm gonna stain it the same color as the fireplace mantle that I made because it's gonna be in the same space and I want it to all kind of match a little bit. And then I'm going to eat dinner because I'm hungry. And then I'll be back tomorrow to finish this project and install in the space, which I'm really nervous about because none of my walls are straight, but we'll tackle that tomorrow. Let's stain this thing, friends.
the thing. I wasn't stoked on how much I got done yesterday while it was daylight out, so I decided to spend a few hours last night finishing the stain on the shelf as well as cutting and staining the back panel. And like it definitely worked well in my favor, but also didn't at the same time, if that makes any sense. Because the finish, there are a couple spots I'm not like stoked about, but I think it's gonna be okay. So I needed the soft surface to attach the back because I didn't wanna scratch the front. So I'm gonna do that here and then we're gonna install. Oh man, that actually fit really well. Not bad for working in the dark. I know I didn't show this on camera, but what I basically did was just cut a piece of quarter inch plywood on my table saw, stain it, and attach it to the back with staples. And once that was done, it was time for install. So for attaching these to the wall, I'm actually using these finish head screws. So these have smaller heads so that when you screw them in, they're not as noticeable as big screws. And the reason I'm using this is because I do have to, as you can see, attach that shelf to the wall. And the only way to do that is to screw through the actual side of the shelf. So I'm screwing in places that are gonna be blocked by things I'm putting on the shelf. And then using these smaller head screws means you're not really gonna see how it's attached to the wall. So it's attached to the wall, it's looking good. The only thing I have to do now is attach it to the backside of the actual refrigerator end panel. So what I'm gonna actually do is shimmy out this fridge and then get to kind of screwing it in from the backside. So I have to screw it in from up here, screw it in from down there, and then we should be good to go, hypothetically. It's looking really awesome though, and it's lining up really well with the wall. I mean, like there are a couple things that are off here, but that's what happens when you are working in a house that was built in 1950, like nothing is straight, but it's all good. So I'm going to shimmy out this fridge, screw this in from the backside, and then like the final project in my kitchen is basically done. We're just gonna hang some shades, start putting some things away, and yeah. Oh, my kitchen's are messed up. I literally could cry. Like I literally could cry right now, but I don't wanna get too ahead of myself. Let's finish installing. Let's finish installing this first. Don't get too ahead of yourself, Sam. You still got some stuff to do. No crying yet. Cry when it's done. <sighs> So after shimmying out that fridge, screwing in that shelf and shimmying that fridge right back on in, all that was left was the final touches for this kitchen and my shelf and my kitchen makeover were finally complete after one plus years of working on the entire space. It's honestly pretty amazing how much adding a shelf to the side of my fridge really brought this entire open concept space together. Something about having the wood tones in your face when you walk through that front door in different areas of this entire space just feels so delicious and warm and I could not be more excited about how all of it turned out. This entire space took me over a year to renovate and complete and make look like this and I am so stoked about the final results and I'm even more excited about how excited all of you are, about how excited I am about this entire space. I really just feel the love with this entire house every single step of the way. So thank you so much for all of that. If you missed my kitchen renovation series, please check it out on my channel from start to finish. It was a labor of love, but it was worth all of the hard work. In the meantime though, I will be working on so many other projects to share with you all on the channel this year. So please make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I will be back so, so soon with another project, but until then friends, thanks for being awesome and happy DIYing. Thank you.